All right, hello everyone. So today we're going to do a TFTPD server in Linux. Uh, in this example here, it's using Linux Mint 18.3, which is just based off Debian. Uh, so generally, any kind of Unix distribution is quite similar. I guess the point is that they're all going to have uh, a, a TFTPD server of some sort. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, we're going to install it using apt apt install tftpd also tftp as the client and I'll show you why you want to do that so while we're waiting let's explain why we would want to have a tftp server you probably already know why I'm assuming if you're watching this video you're probably trying to deploy some kind of OS images maybe right uh, over pixie boot maybe you're trying to update some kind of firmware and some other random device uh, maybe you're trying to update firmware in your router or your switch right all valid reasons why you may want to have TFTP as a server. Okay, first we actually have to configure it. Okay, one other thing I want, want you guys to notice as well is that it did install xinetd. Okay, so that's how we're going to control it. Uh, it's a service that is meant to be controlled by xinetd. Interesting enough though, and this is the case in many distributions, uh, it installed the binary, but it didn't install any service under xinetd. There's no entry there. Let's take a look and show you guys what I mean. Okay, trust me on this one, there is no TFTP. We're going to be making it. Okay, so let's create the service here. This is kind of a typical uh, format for an XSignetD service. So a protocol, it's going to be UDP, socket type, it's going to be dgram, weight equals yes, user equals nobody, but it could be anybody. I know that's kind of ironic, but uh, the user, that's a, a Unix uh, user, right? Or a user in passwd, if you will. Okay, so it's an actual user on your system. And server equals user spin in dot tftpd. And as well, there's something else that's quite important is server args equals slash tftp boot. And disable equals no. So I'll quickly explain what these things do, uh, the important things at least. Uh, so I explain the server here. This is the binary of TFTPD. Obviously very important. Uh, you need to specify uh, under server here the binary uh, of what, what the server is actually for, right? So this kind of specify the TFTPD and server args. This is very important because if you don't specify, um, then how do you know where it's going to pull files from, right? This is going to be your TFTP root. And this directory I'm talking about doesn't actually exist on my system, but it's a commonly used one in many distributions. Uh, so that's why I used it. And it could be anything. Actually, a lot of distributions kind of also maybe you look for it in var live tftp. But trust me, you should have this because you just don't know from distribution to distribution, it could be something different that it might default to. So you don't want to have to mess around with that. So I'll show you what we do with that. Okay, we save the file. And we're going to make what we talked about, tftp boot, okay? Okay, and I've actually made it uh, already, but anyway, that's why it says it, it exists. Okay, and let's create a file in there. I'm just going to do the hard way uh, using dd. Okay, we'll call it a reeb tftp, block size equals one megabyte, count equals one. We can make it bigger if we wanted to, but anyway, I'm just making any file. We could also copy any file. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Uh, one more thing you want to do as well. Um, you want to test it before, and a lot of people, they don't really know the easiest way of testing. The easiest way of testing, I think, is to actually retrieve a file. Okay, so there's two things we'll do. First, let's figure out um, what, they are, what our IP is. Okay, and so uh, normally your IP might be something different, but this is the NAT IP I have in my virtual machine. Right, but if this were um, you know the IP of your LAN, this is something you might test from another machine. But I always recommend checking for the same machine first. Right, we want to establish if our config is actually good. Then, if you're on another machine, you don't know. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's a firewall on uh, you know on the source or destination or something in between. Uh, so this is just a good way of eliminating that possibility. Okay, so I want to show you guys one more thing though. Let's just try this actually. Okay, tftp 10.0.2.15. And let's get a reeb tftp. Does it work? Let's see what happens. Okay, hopefully you're waiting suspense. And we have to wait to see what's going to happen. Do we get the file? How long should this take? Oh, transfer timed out. 
Oh, that is interesting. Shouldn't time out of our local host. Okay, so what that actually means, so let's just do a status on X identity, okay guys? Okay, and I don't really see that it started uh, any kind of interesting services. Yeah, pretty much nothing. Okay, but we did make it. But understand this, that xidentd, uh, it doesn't read your config files of services until you restart. Okay, so let's restart the service. You also can do systemctl. Okay, let's just do a status. It's another way of quickly troubleshooting. And let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's pretty happy here. Okay, and now let's try this again. Now it worked. Okay, so we had to restart xsign at D before, right? So it, when you make a new config, right? And this is a common issue that I've seen of people learning Unix-based systems, or you know, Linux, we'll say, um, that in general, when you're creating something in a config file, uh, things don't just magically know. Okay, generally you have to restart that daemon or service for it to reread the config file. So that's what happened there. Uh, it could be, I guess, if you had bad permissions or something that also may say, uh, like a permission or something like that. Um, so if you didn't have time to troubleshoot and you don't care about security, uh, then you could just, you know, just do a, a, a chmod, right? Triple seven like this. Um, so if you're having any kind of permission issues and security doesn't matter and you're sure it doesn't matter, you just need to click and make it work and uh, you're sure there's no threat on the network, you know, assuming it's a controlled network, then you should be good to go. Uh, so I hope that helps you if you're having trouble getting TFTP set up. Uh, it's not that bad to do, but you've got to do basic troubleshooting. So definitely, uh, I think the most frustrating thing I've seen people do, they get frustrated sometimes, is that they would go off, they wouldn't do a basic test like this, and they'd actually go to their device and see, can I get the file over TFTP, hoping it just works, right? So I definitely encourage anyone who is setting up TFTPD, make sure you check on the server itself, right? From local host, that you can actually get a file served, right? There's lots of things that could cause it uh, not to work. Okay, so... Uh, this is the, the best way of troubleshooting. So I hope that helps. Hopefully that you've got uh, your TFTP server running after watching this video. Okay, and thanks for watching.